Uh, in this video, we are going to cover the AKCC 55 and uh, the selection of applications in, within the case controller platform. So uh, in our first video, we covered a general introduction where you were shown the different models that we have showing on this slide as well. Uh, so we'll continue on with these, these same models, compact, single coil, multi-coil. Uh, here now we're, we're going to transition into an application. And so for our Danfoss case controllers, the, the term application goes back to models we've had in the past with something like a, a CC550A for anyone familiar with Danfoss. Uh, an application is the selection or layout of your inputs and outputs that you're going to utilize on the case controller. We know the, the case controller, each model has a finite number of inputs and outputs. Um, so by choosing an application, we're able to define the function of each input and output to match what we would need for a given case. Uh, so what you see here is a chart that, that shows you the different options. Here we're looking at the single coil CC55. Uh, and, and so for, for an application, we have nine different selections we can choose from. And you can see within each one of these applications, we're given uh, a layout for, for what that would equate to with our relay functionality. So the first relay is our solid state relay for any of these choices we would make here. Uh, that's going to be our electronic expansion valve. That wouldn't change from one application to the next. But then you would get into some other functions of the case that we need to control that will change based on our needs. So you can see here, based on the icon, something like an alarm relay, uh, this option for relay or DO2 under the second application would be an indicator for uh, anti-sweat heaters for doors, uh, compressor relay, defrost relay here, lighting relay, fa evaporator fan relay. That, that's some of the, the icons that you're seeing up here and, and what they're meant to indicate that the control function would be for each of these relays. We do get some uh, a little more of a unique option for something like hot gas defrost, where we know there's special needs that the evaporator to control things on the suction side, the, uh, a drain valve, hot gas supply valve. So you do get some unique applications for something like a hot gas defrost as well. I'd say of the list here, application two is probably your most common selection that we see. Uh, it gives us our expansion valve control defrost, case lights, evaporator fans, and then under DO2, again, it also gives us anti-sweat heater control. So for our door heaters where we would need them, that, that would be available through that relay. And then for the other evaporators and cases throughout a supermarket where we may not have door heaters to control, it would just be a matter of not wiring anything up to that relay. Um, but application two, we can kind of blindly uh, apply that for, for most standard jobs, and that way we don't have to worry about picking and choosing from one to the next if it's going to give us what we need. Typically, application two would, would offer anything we need more on a standard setup. With the applications, you'll notice that the input side, there, there's not a whole lot of difference here. Maybe one or two applications uh, you see at six and seven with some different uh, sensor abbreviations, but for the most part, your applications don't change the sensor layout. Uh, the, the abbreviations you see here are carryover from our first video where, where these S2 through S6 designations each represent a sensor location in a case. Digital inputs aren't really changing either from, from one layout to the next. So those things are pretty consistent and pretty standard throughout all of our applications. When we look at the multi-coil case controller, a uh, similar mindset here with, with the, the usage of the applications. Here we only have five selections to choose from. And as you can see, we're increasing in the number of evaporators from one through three with our choices. And then when we get up to three evaporators, uh, we, uh, we covered this in the first video that we cannot do electric defrost um, for a three evap control system. So you wouldn't see any relays tied to defrost functionality here, just our three expansion valves, evaporator fans, uh, anti-sweat heater, and an alarm. So this would be a matter of just matching up the layout that you have. Uh, and typically, at the OEM level, we'll make sure that um, the, the, the layout that's being wired in for a given case, that we have the right options available and that they're being wired to match this. We, we would not have the ability to get in and individually select the function of each individual relay. Um, we're, we're kind of locked into one of these five selections that we have here. 
So if we go into how we would choose these applications now when we're looking at a, a system, a few different options. Uh, one option would be through a system manager if the case controller is tied into, uh, into a system manager like our SM800A. Here we're in the status screen of a, a case controller setup. So this would be our, one of our single of app case controllers. Uh, you can see here, there's a parameter 061, which defines our application. And again, if we hit our drop down list, you can see for the single coil, it's those nine options that we sh just showed on the slides. So it would just be a matter of making one of those selections. One key thing to note with setting the application is that the case controllers have a function called a main switch. This is what allows the case controller to start and stop regulation to carry out its, its control functions. In order to change something that the case controller deems significant, like an application, because we would be um, reconfiguring relay functions when we change this, uh, there's a requirement that the main switch has to be in the off position. So if we're in through the system manager here, we would take that R12 parameter to start or off. And then from there, the application mode, we would go into change that to the option that we want to use. And then once we're completed there, we can go back to the main switch parameter R12 and change that to start. Similarly, through uh, something like the Bluetooth app, if we're connected into the uh, Bluetooth app of the case controller using the CC55 connect application, uh, we would be able to go ahead from our main overview screen, go into our parameter menu. Again, we can make sure under start stop that we're in a stop mode. And then if we go into configuration from there, the application mode, you can see the second option down. We can go in and change that or, or make our selection there for the application that we want. And then once we're done, if we're ready for the controller to start regulating, then we can go back into the main switch option and change that to start. This would be similar with uh, if we're on a local display as well, uh, if it's the, the built-in user interface option on the single of app coil, or if we have a remote set display connected to the case controller, that's another way we'd be able to go into parameter 061, be able to set the configuration or the application we want for the case controller, and then start regulation from there. Hope this video was helpful. Uh, this is uh, the coverage of how we would set an application in our Danfoss CC55 case controller. <laughs>